Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. Um, I've been playing around with the Halloween idea. It is Halloween at the end of this month and we have a challenge in our Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group. Um, and that challenge is Halloween theme. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a Halloween themed pour today and how do we get Halloween theme? We go for fire and orange for pumpkins and um yeah just generally have some fun is what I say. So how do you have fun? You use personal lubricant to make your oil. <laughs> Oh, that tickles my funny bone every time. Um, here I am, 16,000 subscribers, subscribers, subscribers on YouTube, um, watching me play with personal lubricant on a daily basis. How does it get any better than that? <laughs> All right, guys, so that's my dodgy sense of humor. If you don't like it, change channels, find someone else to play with. If you like it, hang in there. I'm going to have some fun and I'd love to take you along for the ride with me. So, what I've got here is a vinyl record, you know, standard 12 inch. Um, this one is World of Waltzes. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Pop a bit of sellotape over that hole there and that stops the paint from pouring through all right if it becomes a clock we're going to want a hole there but until that point in time it needs to be covered now as you'll see that this record has a yellow label and I have painted one side out but I can see there's actually streaks in here, so I have a sense that the, if this would bleed normally, it will bleed through this paint anyway. But that's okay, because we're doing those colours. Now, I'm tossing up. Do I do a flip cup, or do I do an open cup? And I haven't done a flip cup for quite a while. And I'm thinking I might just do a flip cup. So... How do we do a flip cup? This is clean on the inside. I'm not so good at cleaning the outsides, but it is clean on the inside. Um, so a flip cup is where we put the paint into the cup. Sometimes layered, sometimes poured from up high so they all mix up. And then we go whoop, like that and then take it off and see what happens. This is one of those ones where you have absolutely no control over it other than what you've just put in to the pot. So I'm going to start off with this burnt umber, uh, which is brown. Put a little bit of that in there. And then let's pop in some lemon yellow. Let's fire in. Now this is a homemade orange made with brilliant red lemon yellow and this deep yellow all mixed together I might put a bit more of that in I don't have the silicon in the brown and that's all the brown that's going to get into that pot and that's all the yellow that's going to get in there And let's get some more orange and get some more deep yellow. See how I'm pouring from quite up high? And what that does is it lets gravity push the paint down through, creating a mix, mix of colors. And let's use the last of that orange. 
There we go. So by doing that high pour thing, you've got high pour. <laughs> All right, so as I said, the next step is going to be to flip the cup. And you can either do that quick wrist flip that I demonstrated before, or we can flip it over. Just going to let some of those paints merge a little bit and then let's see what we get. Well, it's definitely very orange, which I'm very pleased about. I didn't want it to be dark, which is why I only put a little bit of the brown on. And we have got cell action all over the place. Yahoo! I like cells. My kids used to watch a guy who um, used to say, it was Dan TDM, and he used to play Minecraft. And he'd say, I like gold LLC. Oh, I like cells LLC. <laughs> Let's see how many cells we can get. Coming up through all of that. Remembering we don't have silicon in the brown. And now we are going to stretch those cells. What I'd quite like to achieve, if at all possible, is a... Uh, sunset type scenario um, but that may not occur some of you know that this is really slow stretching for me but I've got some really huge cells in there and I don't want to screw them up Gonna bring it back to the center. That lemon yellow is amazing. Tossed up about that. I wasn't really sure, but I was like, no, you need a light color, and putting white in there could turn it the red pink. So I thought, no, I'll keep that as it is. Okay, now. As you can see, maybe, can you see? No, you can't. Let me show you. There's a lot of air bubbles in here. And you see all these little black dots? They're all air bubbles. And I want them to pop before I finish stretching so that they can expand out and look like cells as well. So just a these come from the lemon yellow. That was just mixed. It has got plenty of bubble looking things still in the pot. So we'll, we'll forgive them for being there, but we won't forgive them for staying. So... Just gonna once again just get it to the side. People were asking the other day on the acrylic pouring for fun Facebook group, how do you keep the backs of your records from getting covered in paint? I don't. I try and keep my fingers and the paint away from that center label so the label stays clean. Sometimes I even cover the whole label with um, contact paper, or Duracell as we call it here in New Zealand. That is a brand name, so I suppose I'd better be careful. 
calling it that. Um, but I just let the paint do what it needs to do. If it needs to run over the side, see look, it's all from underneath. I don't try and keep it clean. I don't even try and clean it off later. Small air bubbles showing up again. Let's see if we can get those out before that last tilt. Those are some cool as cells. Okay, just going to bring that paint over the edge just by dabbing rather than tilting much more because I actually want to bring it back and get rid of some of this squished look around here, all this smeary kind of. Really important to get right over the edges, guys, right down to the bottom of your corners, of your, the bottom of the edges of your canvas if you're doing canvas. And definitely make sure that all your edges of your record have paint on them. Okay. One last torch to get rid of those air bubbles. See, there's still some popping in there. This is one busy painting. I can see so many different things in this. <laughs> it looks like a crocodile nose with a squat nose. Cartoon crocodile. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, sorry, you were a bit out of focus. My apologies. But wow. Wow, 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 wow. And that really does look far too red. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to have a camera that gives you true, guys true colours. But no. Wow. This dude down here looks like a slime monster with a gigantic eye. Can you see him? Or a flying saucer. That's cool. I could just leave it like that and it would look like all these ghouls had come out for Halloween. This is cool. I'm going to get you down and show you some of the really cool pieces in this. Alright. Hopefully this hasn't blown your head off because it's very, very, very orange. Here's my little melting dude with his gigantic eye. I think he's cool. Up here looks like a, a beak. A bird with... Two eyes and a beak. 
looking a bit worse for wear. <laughs> There are some fun cells in here. Oh, there's a snail. Ha! <laughs> I like snails, they're cool. Not eating my vegetables, but I like snails. Mm, these guys are looking <laughs> Oh, see, there's my crocodile. Anybody else see the crocodile? What else can I see in here? This this is actually quite funky. This is this is cool. It's this is looking very 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 crimson red, and it's not that colour at all, guys. Oh, we've got a bubble. Let's get that bubble. If you're using something to pop bubbles, make sure it's dry. It's part of how it pops. It looks like a half-closed eye. Come on, focus, please. Reflection. Come on. No. Ooh, green alien. Rawr. Oh, up the other way. Looks like a frog. You see, it looks like a frog. Where's my finger? There. Two eyes, and there's this Kermit mouth. It is not this crimson red, I promise. Oh, that's a funky, funky cell. All right, so there we go. And this is a lot more lime yellow than it looks on the screen too. Let's see if I can adjust. No. All right, well, we'll have to hope that the sun is out when I come to show you the dry version. But there it is. And I'll be back when this is dry in three, two, one. And here it is. Ta -da! Um, I'm very happy with this. It's come out very shiny. Shiny, happy Mickey. <laughs> um, it's a lot shinier than normal. And I'm wondering if that is the added PVA in the mix. Um, but that is very cool. Our world of waltzes is waltzing fantastically, fabulously. Um, the colours are bright and vibrant and the cells have held their shape. There is a bit of um, definition in the physical, it's like it's not perfectly smooth, but I'm, I'm totally cool with that that is awesome see how that has a texture um yeah i really like this it is bright and vibrant and wowza now being it a um halloween themed month on the acrylic pouring for fun facebook group and being that this is kind of Halloween colours it's bright orange and then it's got dark patches and it's got wispy woobly bits what I thought I'd do is show you a little trick that is a bit fun now some of you will recognise these little images from the the event on the Facebook group for the Halloween stuff and I've only roughly cut these out. They're not awesome. They're just rough cuts. Um, and if you've got something that is a Halloween themed colour style thing. But you don't want to make it a permanent Halloween thing. You can cut out shapes and just stick them on. Make numbers 
and stick them on. And there you have a Halloween. I'm taking it from just being a funky cool thing to a Halloween themed cool thing. There's our little bat up there in the in the ether. Obviously, you know, as I say, they're rough cuts. They're very badly printed. Blah blah blah. And I certainly wouldn't recommend, you know, stealing other people's images to sell make, and make a profit on or anything like that. Um, this image is purely for demonstration purposes. Um, and, you know, if you're ever looking to use an image and call it your own, um, please, please, please follow copyright rules. Sometimes we have a bit of fun with things and, um, but never, ever, ever would I cut these out, stick them on and call them my own as, um, you know, to sell. But for something fun to make something into a Halloween thing just to hang on your own wall, then why not? Um, copyright is all about not making profit from other people's creations so what magic can you create how much fun can you have just adding a little silhouette here or there to your to your paintings even a um a plain looking painting that really doesn't have a huge amount of anything to it you add a witch on a broomstick silhouette just you know use a bit of blue tack cut it out of black card or whatever and pin that onto a imagine if this little lot were flying through the air on a broomstick instead of holding a lolly bag <laughs> um and it's not a permanent change. It's not something that you, you know, you're not destroying something or risking making a mess of it or anything like that. You can just unblue tack it and you're away laughing as a painting again. So what else is possible, guys? What would you add? Um, what paintings do you have that could be Juged up, <laughs> given a Halloween theme, um, you know, it it doesn't take a master artist to print something out on the computer and blue tack it onto something already existing. I do, I adore you all. How much fun can you have? And if you do make something that's Halloween themed, jump into that Facebook group and post photos and videos and share your YouTube videos of them or whatever you've got going on. Um, that's what the group is for. So, yeah, you're more than welcome to come and play. Um, it is not a place where you sell your goods. We don't have special days where you can promote your sales. But, hey, if you post something and somebody asks you if it's for sale, you're more than welcome to say, actually, yes, it is. Um, but blatant promoting. No thanks. Anyway, now the other thing that I want to show you, I didn't actually show you me making these in the video, um, but I did, after I had turned off the camera, get out some cabochons and play with the leftover paint. Let's see how well I can get these to display. So I've got some really nice cells in this one. That one's cool. So they've got that brownie orange tinge, but that lemon yellow is really coming through in all of them. They are funky. I like them. And for those of you that are new to my channel or haven't watched recent ones, what I do with these is I dip them into the paint. I just Say I've got some paint on my hand, I just dip it in and the paint sticks to the back of the cabochon. It's, just, it's a glass cabochon. I'll put a link in the description on where to find those on Amazon. Um, 
And then look at this one. That's so cool. These have like turned out so funky. And then after um after they've dried, glue them into pendant trays and they are for sale. Um if one of these pops into your brain and goes, I want one um please please contact me before they disappear somewhere else um and they work out at just 25 us dollars including shipping um or 33 new zealand dollars however that works in your currency I think I worked it out. It's about twenty uh, seventeen dollars eighty British pound. It's quite hard to get a good clear picture of them through the through the glass. I bet it's so pretty. So there we go. I adore you all. How much fun can you have? And what else is possible that none of us have even imagined yet? Or have fun playing with that question. Bye-bye.